TV Reader's Digest. True stories from real life selected from the pages of the most famous, widely read magazine in the world. For deal at Yuba Gap. The crisis that overtook the city of San Francisco streamliner to become the greatest drama of the snow since the Thane tragedy at Donner Pass. Six hours of surgery. The taut, exciting drama that envelops the lives of five people of medicine working in the hushed concentration of the operating room to save a boy's life. The man who beat death. The warm, moving, personal story of tennis champion Billy Talbert and his valiant uphill battle to victory over diabetes. The secret weapon of Joe Smith. The classic story of the United Nations and how one reporter proved to the Soviets that the pen is mightier than the sword. My first bullfight. The amusing and highly exciting story behind America's Toreador, Sidney Franklin's claim to fame and fortune as Brooklyn's first matador. Your favorite stories brought to life what you see here is an American city. It consists of a heterogeneous group of people, all races, religions, and nationalities, existing side by side with each other in a way that can only be described as the American way. In this naval supply depot, somewhere in the United States, is a man who saw that way of life in action. He is Spiros Patras, janitor, a naturalized American citizen who first saw the light of day on the Greek Isle of Crete in 1891. Good evening, Mrs. Drew. Oh, hello, Spiros. Working late tonight. <laughs> I didn't bother to go home. I have a date for dinner. That's good. A nice young lady like you. You should get married again. <laughs> you have been a widow long enough. You've been reading my mind, Spiros. Mrs. Drew, you have time to write me a little letter? A short one? A letter? Why, I, I don't know, Spiros. To my wife and children in Greece? Why, Spiros? I didn't know you had a family. Six. Four boys, two daughters. Six? Why, how wonderful. Yes, wonderful. If they were with me here in America. But this takes very much money. All my life I worked hard, but I can't save money. That's my theme song, Spiros. Since I'm 16 years old, when I first come to America, I work very hard. I get my citizen papers, and my mother die in Greece, and I have to go back to old country. Somebody has to work the farm. It is very poor quality, the farm. Gives hardly enough to live. But soon, Soon I meet a very nice girl, and we get married. She is good luck charm, my Maria. Farm improves, everything improves, and we get our kids boom, 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 like that. And while they're growing up, I tell them and my good wife how nice it is in America my new country. I will take him there someday. I tell him. Then the Nazis come with poison rain from their sky and their parachutes. I go to fight. But they capture me. Three years I'm in a prison camp. And when I come out, my family it is a terrible thing to see. They are like skeletons, living like animals in the forests on roots and leaves. Terrible. And I make up my mind. I'm an American citizen. 
I'll go back to my country and work hard and save money and bring him over here. But all the money goes for medicines for the children and doctor bills. And ten years. Ten years that I have not seen my wife and children. Maybe I'll never see them again. Oh, oh don't say that, Spiros. I'm 65 years old next September 1st. But I gotta keep on with the letters. Hope, Mrs. Drew. It is like the good sunshine, which if you do not have it, life is not worth living. Now, what did you want to say? My darling wife and good children. And I just lost all track of time, Hal. Just as if there wasn't another thing in the world to be done except write down what Spiros wanted to tell his family. Well, I'm glad you wrote that letter for him. I always had him figured for a bachelor, didn't you? Just imagine, Spiros with a wife and six kids. He must be pretty old, isn't he? Mm-hmm. He's 65 next September. Three score and five. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? That something ought to be done to help him? Fast. Look, I've got a meeting with Bert Calhoun, president of the Civilian Employees Association, first thing in the morning. I'll take it up with him. Will you work with me on this, too, Mary? Oh, you couldn't keep me away. Mm-hmm. If you care to wait, Commander, I'll put a call through to Washington and have this equipment requisitioned right away. Be glad to. That'll be all, Miss Taylor. Something else I'd like to talk to you about. Well, go ahead. Do you know a janitor here named Spiris Patras? Everyone knows Spiris. Miss Taylor and I were talking about him this morning. I had breakfast with Mrs. Drew. Then you know about his family? Yes. Well, look. If everyone chipped in and we started a fund, we could bring his wife and kids over here. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I'm afraid there's more to it than just raising the boat fare. Investigations, passports, legal clearances, things like that. Well, it's been done before. If you'll approve the fund, we'll have him here for Spirits' 65th birthday. I'll not only approve, but start the ball rolling with a $10 contribution. I'll match that. Here you are. Say, I'd like to add $2, if I may. Anything as long as it's money. I have it outside in my purse. Thanks, Mr. Calhoun. Why don't we have lunch? Talk this thing over. I'll be right with you as soon as I make this Washington call. What do you know that I don't? There are no news stories in a supply depot, and you know it. And I'm not taking you to lunch. Oh, but I'm broke, sis. You don't want to see your kid brother starve to death. What about that $5 bill you keep tucked away in your notebook? Oh, now that is sacred. So is my money. What's that you got in your hand? My last two dollars till payday. Well, we can eat lunch for a buck apiece. This is for the Spiris Patris Fund. Uh, the uh, Spiris uh, Watchers Fund? A janitor who works here. So long. Say, could you use a good human interest story? Oh, I sure can. I'll tell you if you buy my lunch. Oh, but I'm broke like I told you. Now, come on, Betsy, what's the story? Forget it. Uh, no, 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 wait. Okay, it's a deal. I'll be with you as soon as I turn in my contribution. Reporter Joe Taylor got his story, and it made the evening edition of his paper, front page. Say, did you read this item about the janitor over at the Naval Depot? The way they're trying to raise money to bring his family over from Greece? Mm-hmm. A wife and six kids, it'll take a small fortune. You know, I just got a bright idea. Remember that old Benson house? The one on 3rd Street? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me the office finally managed to sell it. No, but it'd be just right for this, what's his name, uh, Patris and his gang. But it's a white elephant. You said yourself be much too expensive. I don't mean to sell it to him. We'd give it to him. Oh? That'd be all right, wouldn't you say? But that's charity. From what the newspapers say, I don't think this man would go for a deal like that. <laughs> I wish somebody had offered to give me a house. <laughs> that's just the point. Nobody ever has. If anybody did, you'd probably turn him down. <laughs> you know what? You're right. 
But suppose I turn the deed over to him and let him pay off the back taxes in the form of rent. Could you do that? Why not? It wouldn't cost him any more than he's paying for one room now. And this way, it'd give room for his whole family to live and breathe in. Sounds grand, and I like you for thinking about it. Oh, horse feathers. That Benson place is standing there like an old barn, not doing anybody any good. Why shouldn't somebody that needs it put it to some use? Why not? Come on, dinner's ready. <laughs> okay. Well, Glenn spoke to the other members of his firm about it, and they're going to give Mr. Patrick the deed to this house just as soon as possible. Oh, your husband must be a wonderful man to do a thing like that, Mrs. Coombs. Oh, they're going to have a regular ball in such a house. <laughs> but what lays it down on after they finish dancing? There ain't a stick of furniture in the place. That's right, I never thought about it. It'll cost them a fortune to furnish it. I'm going to talk to my husband. You know, his motto is, if it's furniture, Charlie Wolf has got it. Now, the warehouse is full of, uh, you know, trade-ins. They're not exactly new pieces. Well, I wouldn't be a bit ashamed to have them in my house. <laughs> the one with the horse face? Oh, stop it. She's a very nice person. Anyway, she's ahead of the sewing circle, and we're going to begin collecting linen tomorrow night. So that takes care of that. The furniture Mr. Wolf is taken care of. This place you're talking about, the one out on 3rd Street? Yeah, the old Benson place. Why? Been trying to sell Glenn Coombs on painting the thing. Well, you wouldn't sell him now, not when he's giving the place away. Needs painting. Uh, I suppose I can wait for a while. Cannot. That siding needs protection from the weather. I'll paint it. Would you, Richard, really? For nothing. You can't let a family move in there the way it is, Daisy. Mm, you're a doll. But what about the union? Well, they'll let me have the men for a case like this. This is different. While you're at it, see about getting the plumbing fixed up. It must be a mess. And the place will need some carpenter work, too. And I'll bet plastering. We ought to do this thing right, Rich, huh? I'll get on the phone right away. <laughs> the Spiros Patras Fund prospered, and before long there was enough money to buy steamship tickets for Spiros' wife and children. But, as Mr. Calhoun said, there was more to it than that. We have the total, Mr. Calhoun. And it adds up to a happy birthday for Spiros. Yeah, maybe not so happy. That was a man from the immigration department on the phone. There's not a chance of getting the family over by September 1st. Not a chance in the world. Oh, no. Why not? What's the matter? Well, red tape. First, every member of the family has to have a quota number, an entry permit. Then they have to be examined by a doctor who has to issue a certificate of health to each one of them. On top of that, we have to furnish affidavits. A thousand affidavits, it seems like, confirming Spiris' citizenship status, setting forth why he left the country and went back to Greece, why he stayed so long, why he didn't bring his wife and kids back in the first place. Five copies of everything and three copies of every copy. And this system was invented by someone in the paper business, I swear. Anyhow, it's got us swamped. Uh, wouldn't you know it. Well, how soon can we get him here, do you think? Lucky to get him here by 1960, according to the immigration man. If you ask me, I'd say we're lucky if we get him over at all. Well, isn't there some way we can speed things up and cut through all this red tape? My dear Mrs. Drew, when the bureaucrats take over, there is no way. I'm just sick about all this. Think of how poor old Spiris will feel when he finds out about it. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the one to tell him. I wouldn't either. You're not asking me to tell him. Well, I really think you'd be the best one to do it, Mary, everything considered. With the campaign to bring the Patras family to America completely bogged down, the committee decided to return all the contributions made in Sparrow's behalf. Oh, good afternoon, Mrs. Drew. How's the Spiros Patras fund coming along? All the money is going right back where it came from. I've got it all right here. Well, what's wrong? Oh, we're bogged down in a mass of red tape. And according to the immigration department, it will take years before we can bring those people over here from Greece. I had to tell Spiros about it this afternoon. It was awful. He just stood there looking at me and wept. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, Mr. Ellington, this is Mrs. Drew. How do you do? Mr. Ellington's one of our attorneys. Forgive me for going on like this about our troubles, Mr. Ellington. The people over at the Naval Supply Depot are trying to bring the family of one of the janitors over here from Greece. Oh. His wife and six children. Well, I'm not an expert on immigration, but I know a few people in the department. I'm flying to Washington tonight. Do you think you could expedite this thing in any way? I'd be happy to see what I could do. Oh, that would mean so much, Mr. Ellington. You're the one who can do it if anybody can, Ed. Mr. Ellington's one of our big city attorneys. He handles all our Washington matters. Well, I 
I, I can't begin to thank you. I'm stopping at the Worth Hotel. Could you meet me there late this afternoon, say about 5 o'clock? 5 o'clock would be fine. And you can brief me on the details then. Mm -hmm. And bring along whatever documents you have. I can look at them on the plane. Okay. Nice to have met you. Thank you. Dave, I'll shoot you a wire on that Sullivan matter on Wednesday without fail, okay? Right, Ed. And when I told them down at the Helping Hand about Mr. Ellington trying to rush things through in Washington, you should have seen their faces. Unadulterated joy on the hoof. What I want to see is Spira's face when that family of his gets here. Will they make it in time for his birthday, I wonder? It's not far off at all now. All I know is Ellington's the kind who won't let go till the job's done and every member of the Pappas family is cleared to board that ship. Which reminds me, three of the boys are old enough to work. There ought to be jobs waiting for them when they get here. Well, there's a part-time job coming up at the snack shop across the street from school, Mother. Well, I'll talk to the owner about keeping it open till the Patras kids get here. Will you do that, Charlie? I'm sure one of them will fill the bill. And I'll talk to my brother, Ralph, about giving one of the boys a job in his factory. You want to know something? They're all going to need clothes, too. Oh, the helping hand's taking care of that, David. <laughs> Everything falling right into place. Just like this jigsaw puzzle, huh? Well, every last paper is signed, sealed, and delivered to the Immigration Department. I personally am going to wire Congress to give that lawyer, Ellington, a Medal of Honor. With Oak Leaf Cluster. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the steamship tickets? Are they taken care of? Uh -huh. I drew the money out of the fund and paid for them this morning. The family leave Athens on the 26th. Let's see, that's uh, Monday, isn't it? Yes. Uh, excuse me. Miss Taylor, would you bring in that checklist, please? Now, uh, you were saying, Mrs. Drew? Oh, about the trip. That's uh, six days on the boat, arrive uh, in New York on Saturday, board the plane, and be here Sunday morning. The first, Spiris's birthday. Uh -huh. I never thought we'd make it. Everything ought to be ready a day or two before they arrive. Oh, thank you, Miss Taylor. Let's see now. Um, painting complete inside and out. Carpentry work, electrical repairs, plumbing, plastering, finish the middle of the week. There's an organization known as the Atlas Moving Company that is to deliver the furniture free of charge tomorrow. And there are half a dozen organizations here for things like uh, curtains, linen, groceries, clothing, heating fuel, things like that. Mr. Calhoun's office. Washington, in just a moment. It's Mr. Blake in the immigration department. Hello, Blake. How are you? How are things in Washington? Oh, fine, fine. And, Danny, what's on your mind? Lost? What do you mean, lost? All the Patras papers are lost. Oh, no. But how could that be? I mean... Yes, I know these things happen, but... Well, what about duplicates? Haven't you any copies? We made enough of them, goodness knows. Oh, I see. I don't suppose it's anybody's fault. No, I understand. Well, thanks for letting me know. Goodbye, Blake. What the devil happened? How could the papers get lost? They just got lost somewhere in transit between the immigration office in Washington and New York. Well, is anybody doing anything about finding them? Sure, they're making a search, but you know what that means. Maybe weeks, maybe months. Maybe they'll never find them. Well, what about the copies, Mr. Calhoun? What did he say about the copies? They're all in one packet. Wouldn't you there think... There must be some other way to get those people over here without the papers. No papers, no entry permits, the man said. And no exceptions. And no family for Spiros. He may never see them again. Who's going to tell him? Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to go through that again. There's going to be one of Spiros alone, just his face face of a man whose wife and six children have just come back to him. Can't you see what kind of a look he'd have? That smile? What this situation needs is a fine hand of a big shot. A man with a magic touch. A guy that says, go through with it, boys, and it goes through. That's the kind of a guy we need. Now, let me see. Who do I know in Washington? Uh, the right congressman might be able to swing it. But Congress the isn't in session, Mr. Welton. I read the newspapers. Committees hold sessions during the summertime, you know. Hey, wait a minute. 
I think Senator Claiborne is still in Washington. Yeah, there was an article on him about over the AP press a little while ago on the early Washington. Here it is, here, here. Washington, August 19th. AP, the Senate committee presided over by Homer Claiborne, held his final session in Washington today. After two weeks in Bermuda, Senator Claiborne will go on to the Middle East. Now that means it's either still in Washington, flying the ocean, or already in Bermuda. One chance out of three was never a bad bet. <laughs> it's uh, dinner time in Washington. Where will we get him? If he's there, we'll get him. <clears throat> oh, hello. L long distance? I want to get Senator Homer Claiborne of Washington, D.C. Yeah, uh, Claiborne, that's right. No, 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 I don't have the number. Well, try the Senate office building first. And if you can't get him there, try all the hotels. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is a hardship case, Mr. Welton. And I'm terribly sorry for Mr. Patras and his family, but I honestly don't know what I can do. <clears throat> yes, yeah, surely, surely, but what you're asking would take an act of Congress, and you know Congress is adjourned till January, and even then we'll be all jammed up with legislation. <sighs> well, yes, there is one way to get immediate action on a thing like this. Uh, by going directly to the president. Yeah. Oh, but uh, that's impossible. Uh, <clears throat> well, well. Here, there's clearances for the Spears Patras family, Senator Claiborne. The president has signed them. The ink's still a little wet. Will you uh, tell the president I'm very grateful? That a lot of people are very grateful. I'll do that, Senator. And thank you, John, for everything. Well, back to running the country. <laughs> uh, the president's order came too late for the Patras family to travel by boat, so arrangements were made for them to fly to America. And within 24 hours, they were settled in their new home in time to celebrate Spirus Patras' 65th birthday. Oh, hello, Sparrows. Good evening, Mrs. Drew. How's the family? The good luck charm is with me again. My wife, Maria, she is well, and the kids, they're well, too. Three boys are working, one boy is in the United States Air Force, and the two girls are going to school. We are very happy people. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad for you. Thank you, Mrs. Drew. You know, Mrs. Drew, all the years that I have been living in this country, I have been hearing about the American way of life. I'm not quite sure I know what this is. Is it? Is it to get rich? Is it to buy things on credit? Is it to, uh, to have uh, ice boxes and automobiles and television sets? No, Mrs. Sister. It is none of these. I know what is the American way of life. It is to help each other. Be sure and watch for your favorite Reader's Digest story. Vividly brought to life on TV Reader's Digest.